Well, 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 you came to the right place for the top five calendar apps this year. I know that just like you, I struggle with figuring out what's the best calendar app, man? Just what is it? And I'll tell you what it's not and what it is in this video. If you're looking to be effective, organized, and just plain happy with what your digital calendar environment is, make sure to stick around to the end of this video where you might be surprised at my final pick. First and foremost, I'm gonna say that on my top five list is definitely Google Calendar. Google Calendar is an amazing calendar app that is the bones and the backbone of a lot of different tasks that you have, of a lot of different calendars that you have, even from the big companies that you see out there. As somebody who uses Google Google workspace for my business, I can appreciate how great it is from a personal and business standpoint. I use this tool for over two and a half years before switching to my new tool, which we'll hear about later. And I wasn't necessarily unhappy with Google at all. It's hard for me to dislike a platform that has the ability to add multiple different calendars here, accept multiple different calendars from other people and incorporate all of the Google workspace products like the Google Tasks feature where you can literally just say something along the lines of take out the trash, set a date and time on this guy to tomorrow at 2 p.m. and then drag that. And then from there, you'll see it pop up on your calendar with ease and the ability to mark it as complete is simple and takes it out of your spot right here. You also have the ability to easily utilize Google Keep or cross-reference different contacts that you have in your Google Workspace in order to make inviting people to meetings that much easier. Cross-referencing the other people on your team members' calendars is also extremely important as you're able to see when people are actually able to make the time to meet with you. There are also a myriad of other Google Workspace advantages to using Google Calendar if you are a business. And for me, I know one of my favorites is just being able to interact with Google Meet share different files across the Google ecosystem, and much, much more. It's a completely free app, and I won't act like this isn't anything other than a great option, so make sure to go check it out. The second one on this list is actually going to be Apple Calendar, which, for those of you that are unaware, is not only great for your own personal usage, but is also great for sharing different calendars as well. For me, as much as I would love to just create a new event and stick it onto my own Apple Calendar, in the situations where it makes sense, i.e. using the calendar on my watch or sharing my calendars with my family who also have iOS devices, I actually utilize Apple Calendar in order to do things like share events with my family. I was meeting a little baby in my family the other week and my mom shared that with me because was adorable and we had to stay on the same page. And while Google Calendar is solid for sharing these as well, I know a couple people that actually use Google Calendar as their calendar account with their Gmail and then interact with it via the front end that would be Apple Calendar. As you can see, you can have multiple different calendars added here as well as the different colors that exist to interact with. And it even shows the meeting invitees it has the ability for you to set it up as a Google Meet or otherwise. And I'm a huge fan of the way this works overall. If you're looking for a free, great calendar app on your phone, on your Mac, and on your other iOS devices, I would definitely recommend checking out Apple Calendar for free today. Now, next on this list is actually going to be the best calendar app for Notion users. This is going to be Notion Calendar. For those of you that don't know what Notion Calendar is, it's essentially just Cron, which is a really nice calendar application that Notion purchased in 2022. After purchasing this app, they kind of sat on it for a while and they'd been making improvements to the product for months and months. After that, they ended up taking Notion and allowing you to not only have a Google Calendar UI improvement, but also be able to integrate with your Notion account. So as you can see here, this is like a task database that's connected here, and I could take these onto my calendar and time block accordingly. As you can see, I have some of these different ones right here where they're attached to the different items that I have inside of my specific databases that I choose. And if you wanna check out an entire video on that, make sure to check it out on my channel as it is a really great way to improve your skills using Notion Calendar. Now. For me, I find that the amazing useful shortcut that is the command bar is awesome. I can press S and share my availabilities with others. And from there, I can grab some time slots and quickly create a scheduling link that then somebody could go through. And in here, you'll see that I can send an email to someone showing exactly when I'm available time-wise. And also in this link, it would have the ability for them to set up a time with me, utilizing that link to chat. You also can set up quick meetings by pressing F and just type up somebody in your team to set up a quick meeting to chat with them and it'll cross-reference when they're available 
utilizing the back end of what Google Calendar exists inside of their schedules. Now, overall, I find this to be a great improvement on top of Notion, but it's not my number one calendar app for myself personally. There are two more calendar apps we're going to dive into, first of which is Fantastico. This is an app that a lot of people who really enjoy their mobile calendar apps and their Apple calendar apps always recommend using. Now, this is a product that has a premium aspect to it, which is the first one on this list, and you do have to pay for it for $7 a month. However, it's a pretty cool tool. It essentially has the Apple reminders embedded here on the side. And then what you can do is interact with it any other way that you would expect to for a calendar app. And it has some different views that I like, like the year and quarter view, which you don't usually see a quarter view. But a lot of people believe that it is essentially Apple Calendar with a bit of a level up to it. Many seem to just find the interactions with the UI to be a little bit better. And I myself do think that it has a bit of an upgrade over that as well. Now, last but not least, my favorite calendar app is Morgan. Morgan Calendar is a product that simply combines your productivity stack into one place and allows you to not only have a calendar, but a daily planner. If you ever check out their YouTube channel, I'm on there too, because I'm just cool like that. But in all seriousness, there is an easy way to do everything on here. You can schedule your tasks extremely easy onto the calendar. You can drag a different time slot and create an open invite, which is very similar to what you saw in Morgan Calendar. Then I can take this and copy the text, send out an invite. And I also have the ability to create multiple booking pages for different items. Like for me, I know that there's something different between a discovery call and just a regular meeting. So I have different time slots for these, as well as booking time with podcast guests. It's so easy for me to take my tasks here and find a little time to slot in to just call mom if needed. It's simple and effective, but the fact of the matter is I find the UI, the UX, and the entire experience of Morgan to just be a little bit better than everything else. And its most recent Notion integration, for all intents and purposes, did make me pretty darn excited as I'm able to, inside of here, drag my events, schedule my Notion tasks onto my calendar, and then from there, when I check them off inside of Morgan, I actually check them off inside of my Notion account. Now, in all transparency, even though I do work with them, it is my favorite calendar app. But the pricing on this ranges from a basic plan where you get the desktop and mobile apps and one calendar integration, which can be used with not only Google, but also Outlook and anything else you have. However, pro version is gonna be $9 a month on the yearly plan and $15 a month on the monthly plan. However, this is substantially cheaper than the average daily planner price. You look at other apps like Akiflow, Motion, etc. All of them are in the 20 or $15 range, and this is substantially cheaper than that. Now I will say, if you are someone who is interested in working productively every day, I'm never gonna be opposed to paying for productivity apps. Having something in your budget of of anywhere from 10 to $50 in productivity apps might seem weird for the monthly subscription. However, we spend money on entertainment and convenience a lot more than that, especially for people like me in the United States. And I've always questioned that when you can get so much more out of a return on investment on a productivity app that, you know, Maybe you're a little bit more productive at work. Get a raise here and there. That's worth the 5 to $15 per month that some of these apps cost. So I definitely recommend not making price a huge deter of trying out these apps. That's what these free trials are for. Make sure to give them all a try and make sure to check out content like this one on how to improve your skills using productivity tools even more.